السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك Today, inshallah, we will be uh, talking uh, about four hadith, inshallah, and we will be starting with hadith number 11. Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, حفظت الحسن بن علي بن أبي طالب صبت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سد حفظت من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دع ما يريبك إلى ما لا يريبك سوى الحسن ابن علي the grandson of سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سد I remember these words from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Leave that which makes you doubt to that which does not make you doubt. Actually, this hadith uh, is similar to a previous hadith where we mentioned that we mentioned earlier. Uh, in hadith number six, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-halal bayin wal haram bayin wa baynahuma umurun mutashabihat. So that which is lawful is clear. And that which is unlawful is clear. And between the two of them are doubtful or uh, ambiguous matters. So when we talked about this hadith, we mentioned wara, we mentioned taqwa, we mentioned piety. And we said earlier that it is better to leave the doubtful matters, even though they may be halal. And the reason for that is to ensure that the doors of haram are completely closed. Um, we also mentioned that uh, the people of Allah, the uh, awliya of Allah, leave a boundary of halal. So there is a space of halal that they do not get into. So not to fall into doubtful matters. And Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu an, he said, I like to put a barrier of halal between me and that which is haram. And I do not break this barrier. So he he will avoid some halal actions so that he ensures he does not fall into haram. These are the people of Allah. These are the people of wara, the people of taqwa. And the hadith lays out method, the method which, we will, uh, uh, which will leave us with peace and tranquility in our hearts. So when we have this taqwa, when we have this wara, then our hearts are at peace. And Hassan ibn Sinan said, nothing is easier than wara, than taqwa. If you doubt something, then just leave it. Leave it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And keep in mind that whatever you leave for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will highly reward you for that. فَإِنَّ الصِّدْقَةُ مَأْنِينَ 
والكذب ريبة. Why do we do that? Because truth, as I mentioned, is peace of mind. And falsehood is doubt. So when you want to do something that is halal, that uh, there is no question about it, you do it without thinking about it. But if you want to do something that, that is not permissible, especially if it is the first time that you are doing something that is not permissible, then you will find it very difficult. Your heart will be shaking. And you, need, you will need someone to justify what you are doing. But the halal thing, you don't need anyone to, to just give you a fatwa to do it. No. If someone wants to do something that is not halal, then he will go from one sheikh to another sheikh to another sheikh, trying to get a fatwa that will allow him to do that thing. So leaving, leaving the, this boundary of halal leads to tranquility of the heart and of the mind. And truthfulness sets in the heart. And what's in the heart is reflected on the face. And that's why when you see someone with a radiant face, you know that. There is a special connection. There is a special relationship between this person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you find that something is doubtful, then leave it. Even, even if others tell you that it is halal. And there is a saying, Just check with your heart, even if people tell you that you can do such a thing. So let's all get try to get the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we leave something for his sake especially if if there is uh um uh, yeah, if if this if it is halal also not only if if there is a doubt about it just leave it if something is going to take to take you to to do something bad then don't start it even if the first action is halal and this can, can be uh, manifested in having relationships with people. Choose your friend who will be a true friend for you. And choose it according to the teachings of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do not, do, not friend, uh, do not be a friend with someone whom you know that he does something that is unpermissible. Because no matter what, the friend will affect, will have an impact on, on his friend. So when you leave that friend for the sake of Allah, or when you... Do not be, when you are not a friend with that person for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace that one with another person. Allah will reward you for that because you left something for his sake. So having talked about this hadith earlier, we are not going to spend a lot of time on here and we will be moving to uh, the next hadith, inshallah, hadith 12, where 
أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من حسن إسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعنيه So Abu Huraira radiallahu anh reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said uh, part of uh, the perfection of a person's Islam is his leaving that which is of no concern to him. It's a great principle in manners. It's a big lesson. So the concern mentioned in this hadith is not what concerns us personally, but the concern should, should be based on the sharia. So it's not acceptable to say my neighbor is not of my concern uh, because uh, uh, I don't want to get involved with him. No. We cannot say that this neighbor is not of my concern because Sharia ordered us to be good to our neighbors. So what concerns us is not defined by what our souls or hearts feel, but rather with what Sharia defines to be something of concern to us. So it is what um, uh, what would this action or these words do to my aqidah and to my religion? This is the concern. Will it make the bond between me and Allah stronger? Is the action that I'm going to do getting me closer to Allah? If the answer is yes, then do it. Or say it. But if the answer is no, then don't do it. Our whole life is based on getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should, we should scale our deeds. We should think of our words. We should, we should mind our business and not get into things that are not of our concern. Actually, uh, the hadith shows that Islam is highly concerned with the welfare of the society. How? If we look into arguments, if we look into fights among people, we find that almost all of them stem from excessive speech. They stem from people getting into issues that are not of, of their concern. So we should focus more on improving our society. When, when everyone uh, is, uh, is uh, at, by, by the boundaries where he should stay, where he should, what he should say, then our society will be a good society, will be a healthy society. We should focus more on improving ourselves more than looking at the faults of others. We should, this should be our concern, improving ourselves. If each and every person just looks after their own mistakes, fix their own mistakes, then society will be healthy. We shouldn't care about other mistakes. What, what we should be doing, we should be making dua for them that Allah will heal them, that Allah will give them cure from, from whatever mistakes they are doing. And on the other hand, we should make dua for ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved us from committing the same mistakes. We should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. So, 
This hadith actually pushes us to focus on the things that will benefit us not only in this dunya, but also in the hereafter. And this means it elevates us into the state of ihsan. So we feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with, with us. Allah is watching over us. Allah is witnessing what we say. Allah is witnessing what we do. So we feel, we feel that it's shameful to indulge in anything that does not concern us. If we just follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we will, we will not have any uh, time for such things that, that will make us uh, envy people, that will make us interfere with other people. So each and every person will be concerned, will be focusing on, on themselves. And this leads us actually to the next hadith where Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, no one, no one of you becomes a true believer until he likes for his brother what he likes for himself. Again, this hadith builds a very strong society. And it lays the foundations on how we should act with the believers. لا يؤمن أحدكم The negation here, so... No one of you becomes a true believer. No one. So this negation, which is mentioned here in this hadith, is not a negation of, of, of existing, existence of iman. لا يؤمن. The word يؤمن means to believe. So none of you will become, none of you is a believer Until he loves to his brother what he loves for himself. So how, how would we understand this hadith? What is this negation here? So the negation mentioned here is not a negation of existence of Iman. There is Iman. But the negation is the completeness of Iman. Someone has Iman, but he will have a complete Iman if he likes for his brother what he likes for himself. So this love uh, can only be attained if we remove any envy or hatred from our hearts. Because if someone wants to love something for his brother, then his heart should be clear and clean. If there is envy, you know, envy is dangerous. It's, it's like saying, oh Allah, I disagree with your decree for giving that person something good. This is what it means. So we should have a sound heart. This is the core. And we know that having a sound heart will be the, the victory in the day after. It will be the success in the day after because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Illa man bin salim. We should have a sound heart so to be saved in the day after. And uh, one of the shiur said, you can have a sound heart by, by saying, Ya hayu ya qayyum, la ilaha illa ant, 
41 times between the Sunnah prayer of Fajr, after you complete your Sunnah prayer, and before you pray the Fajr, the Fard, then after completing the Sunnah, stay for a few minutes, say these, La ilaha, ya hayu ya qayyum, la ilaha illa and 41 times, with the aim, with the hope, inshallah, of having a sound heart. And this is one of the best way to do it. So we want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having a sound heart. And when we work for that, for the day after, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will facilitate the results starting from this dunya. So our hearts are clear. Our hearts do not have any envy for anyone. So the hearts can, can wish the best, the same thing that we have for our brothers and sisters. And of course, brothers and sisters mean brotherhood and sisterhood, not only our uh, direct brother and sister. So now, if we ask ourselves, what are some of the rights of brotherhood or sisterhood? The first thing that we uh, might think of is saying to their needs. And that can be performed in several ways, actually. The first one is when our sister or brother asks for help, then we, we are there for them. We answer their call. The higher uh, level is that we feel that they need something and we do it for them without, without them asking. So this is a higher level than the first one. But the highest level is putting forward their needs over our needs. So if we have something that we need badly and we know that a brother or a sister needs it, and why not? We give it to them. And we give it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not for any other reason. And with, with, uh, when, when we do this, then we practice the complete Iman. And this is la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. No one will have complete Iman until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. So this is about uh, giving things. But there is a different, a different type of giving also. And it is the giving that's made by the heart. It is, it is to treat your brother or sister the same way of how you would like them to treat you in similar situations. And this includes uh, so many points, actually. So the first one will be not mentioning their faults, whether in presence or absence, and except to privately and politely advise them. And again, uh, this was the essence of our hadith number seven, uh, which we covered last week. So, we advise each other. We do not mention their faults in front of others, in the presence of other people. No. We advise them privately, politely, and the most important thing, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something else is uh, we shouldn't argue with them or mock them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hujurat in Ayah 11, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu, la yaskhar qawmun min qawm. Oh, you who believe, people should not ridicule or mock another people, other people. Another point is, uh, 
And uh, as we just mentioned in the previous hadith, actually, not to indulge in what is not of our, our concern. Some people like to ask so many questions. Well, what, what, if, what, if, the peop, what if people don't want you to get involved with certain issues? Mind your own business. We should always not interfere with others. Let people by themselves. So again, if someone entrusted you with a secret, then you should keep that secret. You should never tell it to anyone. And of course, if you wanna uh, entrust someone with a secret, that person should be a special person. You don't give your secrets to anybody. You don't get uh, advice from anybody. You just, you just know, you should know who to take as a friend, who to take uh, uh, as a person who will be entrusted with your secrets. Okay, now, uh, some of the things that uh, you might love for yourself. And if you have good faith, you love the same things for your brother and sisters. Some of these things are um, calling them with their best names. Do not call them, call, call them with any bad names. Uh, you should inform, inform them of your love for them. And this is uh, one of the teachings of uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who said, إِذَا أَحَبَّ الرَّجُلُ أَخَاهُ فَلْيُخْبِرْهُ أَنَّهُ يُحِبُّهُ When a man loves his brother for Allah's sake, then let him, or uh, he, he should tell him that he loves him. And the... The person who learns about that uh, should give an answer. May he whom he, you love me for his sake love you. So this is one of the, of the things that uh, you should have for your brother or sister. Uh, also making du'a for them. You love people to make du'a for yourself, for you. So when you love people, you make du'a for them. And you, you love them not only for this dunya, but also for the akhir. And when you love someone, you inform that person, you inform him uh, when other people praise him uh, and uh, uh, when uh, other people uh, talk well to good about them. So when you hear something, something good being said about someone you know, tell him. That will make him happy. And this shows that you have a good heart. A heart that, that, that has no envy to people. In certain times, certain uh, incidents, the, the reality of a person would, would be known. And this is one, one, one point that if, if, if you hear some uh, a praise about someone, you should feel happy, you should feel good for that person. You should not say, oh, why are they praising them, that, that person and not me? No. Again, when you, when you uh, uh, like someone, you should, defend, you should defend that person in presence or in absence. So if you know something uh, about um, yeah, a brother uh, or a sister that you know that others do not know, then say it when there is a need for it to be known. Say it. 
Say it to defend them, whether they are present or whether they are absent. Be fair to them. And this is one of the ways of how you are fair to someone. Also, if you, uh, if you see a special blessing on your sister, uh, practice, practice the good and the sound envy. What does this mean? Oh, so now we are saying no envy. Now we say good envy or sound envy. This means that when you see something good on someone, make dua that Allah would keep this blessing for them and that Allah would give you something similar. So be happy for them, make dua that Allah would keep it and be uh, ask Allah to give you similar, uh, similar blessings. Also, always remember that it's not enough to love someone for this dunya only. A true love would make you care for the life after of that person. So you want them to be happy in both lives. And that's why loving someone truly means giving him or giving her advice for the sake of Allah. And of course, while maintaining the steps of a good advice. So these are some of the points that we have to have towards our uh, loved, loved, loved ones, loved brothers, loved sisters. So uh, another important thing is you should always have good thoughts and you should never think ill of that person. So give excuses. Always give excuses. In one of the hadiths, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said, give 70 excuses for your, for your brother or sister. Do not think bad of them. Just say, do not think of what you think about it. Take the apparent, what's apparent, take it as is. Do not say, oh, they said so, then it means so. No. Have good thoughts always. Also, loving a, a, a sister for the sake of Allah means that this love will continue after the passing of that person. How? By making dua for them? By giving some sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for them. For, so your niya will be, Ya Allah, I, I want to give this uh, charity uh, for so-and-so person, someone who died, someone who passed away. So loving someone does not mean that, okay, it stopped. This love stopped after their death. No. You can be good. Uh, show, show, show something good to their family after their death. So there are so many ways of continuous love even after the passing of that person. So if we look at this hadith, we find that it is but a complete moral class on how we should deal with each other. So when we have a brother or a sister, we should love them for the sake of Allah, for no other reason. Not because they are wealthy, we, are, we want them to give us, uh, to share their wealth with us. No. We should always make dua for each other. And we should always enjoy ourselves while we are with them. We should appreciate our precious relationship, especially when it is a relationship for the sake of Allah only. Otherwise, Allah will replace it.
And moving forward, inshallah, we will uh, cover Hadith 14. And Ali ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يحل دم امرئ مسلم يشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأني رسول الله إلا بإحدى ثلاث السيب الزاني والنفس بالنفس والتارك لدينه المفارق للجماعة So the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said it is not permissible to spill the blood of a Muslim except in three cases. The married person who commits adultery, a life for a life, and the one who forsakes his religion and separates from the community. Previously, when we talked in Hadith number eight, we talked about um, about we talked about this this Hadith, and we mentioned that we treat people based on uh, what they portray and what they say. If deep inside they are not sincere, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will judge them. It should not be our concern to judge people. No, Allah is the ultimate judge. So Islam came actually to, to organize the affairs of society. So it's not like a jungle. The uh, strong would eat the, um, the weak, the, no. There are rules for society. There are laws that establish the well-being of a Muslim. So there are five main things in Sharia that it protects. And these things are religion, life, honor, wealth, and the intellect. So this is what Sharia protects. It's, so one of these, these things, the five things are, uh, one of these uh, pillars is the life, the soul. No one can shed the blood of another person because, okay, he did something bad to me, then I will kill him. No. Sharia actually um, is not just laws and regulations. It refers to the whole religion and including the matters of aqidah. And when the rights the rights of society are uh, uh, are far greater than the rights of an individual. And so this, uh, uh, this is why the Sharia legislated the rulings, although the consequence uh, the consequences are all protected. So the Sharia legislated the rules so that the society will be sound and safe. So no one can shed the blood of another person. There are people who are in charge. And if they feel that there is a need for killing someone, they would fulfill that need. So the ruler will judge if there is this need or not. So no one 
no one goes and apply the rules by themselves. You take your case to a lawyer, the lawyer takes it to a judge, the judge will, will take decision. So who are those who, 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 who die, who, who, who are, whose blood can be shed? Those are the merry person who commits adultery. And this is just to save society. We cannot have relationships here, uh, right and left, no. If someone kills someone, then that person should be killed. And there are rules for that in the Quran. If someone is killed from, if a Muslim kills a Muslim, if a Muslim kills a non-Muslim, if, if so many rules for that. So a life for a life. And if someone ap apostatize from this religion, say, okay, I don't want to be a Muslim anymore. That person, his blood can be shed. He can be killed. He's separated from the community. He doesn't want re this, this religion anymore. He can be killed. And this is what, this is what Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an did when after the death of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So at that time, he uh, took uh, uh, an army and he killed those who uh, uh, stepped away from religion. Religion, if, if uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he died, religion does not die. Religion is to go over until the day of judgment. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr did that so that people would know they, they would know for sure. So, and this is for those who, who uh, became Muslims at a late age and not those Sahaba or those companions who, uh, who, who became Muslim at the beginning of Islam. Things should be made clear. So the, uh, the sanctity of a Muslim is important. The blood of a Muslim is not allowed to be split in doubtful, doubtful areas. There are punishments for crimes. There are punishments for um, uh, uh, doing, doing bad things. But applying these rules is for the leader of the Muslims only, the leader. So this is uh, actually, uh, uh, as I mentioned, it was also, this hadith was mentioned earlier uh, when we talked about hadith number eight. And uh, with this, inshallah, we come to the uh, end of today's session. And we say, Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu kama yinbaghi li jalali wajhika wa azimi sultanik. Ya Rabbana laka alhamdu wa shukru wa niyamata wa rida. And until we meet again next week, inshallah, uh, I would like to leave you now by sending your and my best salam to and salawat to our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.